the formidable robot. Who here remembers Fruit Punch Bicycle? Fruit Punch Bicycle was an animator on Newgrounds who gained a small bit of notoriety in 2014 and grew throughout 2016. I remember she was somewhere around 15 or 18 years old. She originally joined Newgrounds sometime during late 2009. She made her own original works, but was primarily known for creating parody animations on the site. I think her real name was Leah, but I may be wrong. I'll just be referring to her as her username for most of this post because of this. She had the average edgy humor that a wide majority of the people on the site had. She was a fairly skilled animator, if I remember correctly. She voiced most of the characters in the videos, but every now and then she would have extra voice actors. I recently found an old flash drive I had some years ago, and I happened to have her profile picture saved as a file on there. Said profile picture was based on her username. A red plastic cup with fruit punch pouring from it placed behind a tilted bicycle. It was accompanied with a solid color background, being a dark shade of purple. The rest of this flash drive aside from one other thing, which I will get to later, was just random memes from the same era of the internet as what I'm talking about. Random things I found cool, including this one random screenshot of a Roblox game I took once. Persona had long grown out brown hair with some purple or blue highlights. A Nirvana shirt was always worn, and her bottom half was drawn in a simplistic manner. Flat sideways half triangle sharp shoes with the same color pants. Said pants and shoes merged with the shirt. The design, I assume, was based on how Fruit Punch Bicycle looked in the real world. She had a series of these parody animations where the titles were, X goes to Y. Sims Goes to Home Depot, was one of her videos that I can recall. In this video, Papyrus sends Sims to go get some plywood from Home Depot, as the name would suggest. I'm gonna describe the events here. The video starts with a title card, with the title in all caps, in white comic Sims text, and on a black background. The actual animation part happens after. Sans and Papyrus are in their house, and Papyrus tells Sans that he needs to go to Home Depot to go get some plywood. He lazily refuses, making an excuse, the specifics of said excuse I cannot recall, and staying on the couch. In one of the many new grounds humor moments, Papyrus immediately and characteristically snaps and screams at Sans, calling him a cunt, threatening him, etc. It cuts off in the middle of his rant, cutting to Sims outside of the Home Depot in Snowden, which he promptly teleports into the inside of. He finds an employee, who turns out to be Burger Pants, where the plywood is, in which he promptly points in the direction and, in a miserable tone, says something along the lines of Over there. Sans thanks him, and goes to the place he was pointed to. Burger Pants then shoots himself dead with a pistol once Sims walks away. Sims reaches the area he was pointed in, and notices there isn't that much plywood and that the shelves are mostly empty, excluding just the amount of plywood he needs. Suddenly, Flowery appears and yells out, Hey, fat fuck! That shit is mine! Or something, and a fight breaks out over the plywood, Sims dodging every attack effortlessly while Flowery purses him out. Flowery ends up turning into Photoshop Flowery, throws some of his signature attacks, and then is immediately folded in a single frame by Sans with a gaster blaster. Sans then takes the plywood and is about to leave with it, when suddenly an enemy side character from the game, wearing a Home Depot outfit, appears and says to Sans that he has to pay for the destruction he caused. Sans pauses, and then immediately punches said employee in the face, throws the required payment at the cashier, and bolts out the door within very few frames. Cut to Papyrus at the house, waiting. Sans immediately bursts through the door, panting, holding the plywood. Sans promptly hands said plywood to Papyrus before laying right back on the couch. A knock or the ringing of the doorbell is heard, Sans begrudgingly answers, and is met with Flowery in normal form holding an entire nuke in his hands. Sans says, Fuck! before being cut off by the bomb going off. Cheesy, the end card with Fruit Punch Bicycles Sona gleefully dancing in place. I remember there was a home stuck animation, but I can't remember jack shit about what happened in that one, other than that I think they went to Walmart. If not Walmart, at least some very similar location. 
She had her own series with her OCs. It was named something like, The Show You'll Like A Lot. It was referred to via an acronym in the titles, so I'll be referring to it as TSYLA. It had an intro with music, and in that, the title was on display in full. TSYLA had Fruit Punch Bicycles Sona, a Cyclops older guy named Jimber, a recurring villain named Evie L. Dude, evil clones of the characters whose names were just the normal versions names spelled in reverse, and the goldfish named Spatula who had a third eye. Reminds me of the fish from The Simpsons. They all lived in one big town, and they went on wacky adventures. The episodes had the type of early South Park tank men humor you'd come to expect from her. She also had a series named, Brian Osborne Timothy, which was about a regular Joe, slowly realizing he was a robot as the series went on. I may not have gotten the name exactly right, but either way, his initials spelled out, but, a hint to what the plot was. It was a surreal comedy horror. I don't think the series ever got finished, but it was genuinely amazing. She was in the fandoms you'd expect somebody to be in at the time. Gravity Falls, Homestuck, Undertale, Five Nights at Freddy's, etc. She would sometimes make content or posts about them on her new grounds page. She had her own Tumblr blog, titled, Fruit Punch Blogsicle, a pun on her new grounds username. On her blog, she would post sneak peeks to her new content, and would sometimes open up her ask box so people could ask about whatever. I remember I sent some asks every now and then. I remember I was quite a fan of TSYLA, and would frequently comment on her works. That's why I have memories of said works, because I indulged in said works quite a bit. Her content was normal for quite a bit, before something happened in TSYLA that had me confused when it first happened. During an episode about Jember trying to challenge God to a boxing match, the screen suddenly flashed some text. This text specifically read, When I do it, you won't be able to hide. SpongeBob goes to McDonald's, had SpongeBob snort a line of cocaine, pick a fight with Ronald McDonald, and then eat a Big Mac before driving off the Grand Canyon and fucking dying. She, before its upload date, posted a date in which the animation would be uploaded. The animation's events weren't out of the ordinary, but the upload date was delayed without warning. TSYLA had an episode where EVL guy was trying to send a nuke at the house of our main cast and they had to find a way to stop it. In the middle of the video, an image appeared for a few seconds, showing a screenshot of the asks that she was receiving, from her view. One specific ask was censored with a black box with white drawn on words inside that read, you'll know soon. Again, the animation's events weren't out of the ordinary, aside from the strange image. What did that ask say? Nobody knew at the time. She uploaded something to her blog one day, not related to any of her animations. To those who care, I'm sorry for what I'm about to do. To the other people, you know who you are. You can't hide forever. She refused to explain what this meant, and deleted it shortly after. It was up for a while though. Then it happened. She uploaded a new animation. It was a parody animation like she usually uploaded. A video that seemed unassuming. Dipper goes to Taco Bell. It had the type of thumbnail the other parody animations had. The character or characters in question in front of the location they went to with a string of text. Nothing seemed wrong at a passing glance. If you wonder how I have the thumbnail, it was on the same flash drive. The video started with Dipper, Mabel and Stan at the diner. Well here we are! The diner! We always go here, Stan. Can't we go somewhere else? Dipper interjects. You're well to bed. I already picked this place. That's just how it- Mabel says something. Actually, there is that a Taco Bell in the woods, Dipper. You could go there sometime late. We pan out to reveal that Dipper is already gone. We stay on the same frame before a cheesy explosion effect is layered over Mabel's face. We see Dipper at the Taco Bell in the woods, ordering from it. The man at the register looked like your stereotypical mysterious person, with a jacket, sunglasses and a hat. Everything he wore was black. Hello, can I get a... Oh, the burrito? We only sell tacos! No, the burritos are right there. You, you can see them on the menu. TACOS! Okay, Jesus, you don't have to yell at me. 
Dipper ordered a taco, took a bite, and then it immediately cut to what made this animation special. Fruit Punch Bicycle Orly is Sona standing at a drawing tablet in front of a computer in a darkened bedroom with a sonic poster. I'm gonna say Leah for this part, because this was clearly trying to show something she was going through in the real world. Leah's Sona stares blankly before her head falls into her hands, heavily breathing. She stays like this for a bit, before turning back up and ripping her eyes out of her skull with a loud static noise. It cuts back to the animation. Dipper takes a bite, comments that it's pretty good, and then makes a face of, oh shit oh fuck, before running out of frame. His screaming is heard off screen. Then it cuts to the inside of the bathroom, outside the stall. Dipper walks out with a face of unbridled terror with a comically large mountain of shit emanating from the toilet. He's about to walk out, before the mountain of shite begins to shake and rattle. It slowly morphs into Bill's form, before waking up, popping out, and punching Dipper in the face, knocking him out cold. Bill, now in the form of a pile of human excrement, busts the door down and begins to charge towards the man at the register, who promptly gets his neck twisted by Bill. Bill bursts through the door of the restaurant and walks into the diner where Stan and Mabel are located. He bursts in through a wall like the Kool-Aid man and begins fucking shit up. Lazy Susan pulls out a shotgun and blasts his face in. The animation freezes abruptly, all the audio stopping. We cut to a black screen. We begin to hear a gentle melody play in the background. There are consequences for your actions. You can't hide anymore. Images were displayed on the screen, staying there for a good few seconds. The first image was an unedited version of the screenshot of her asks from the TSYLA episode. The ask that was hidden was now shown. It was a whole slew of insults and horrible things. It called her a whore, told her to kill herself, and much more. The following images were in the same vein, being horrible things she was sent. One even included her real address and had some horrid threat written alongside it. The address was censored by Leah for obvious reasons. The next ones were worse. Saying that they were gonna kill her, exactly how, and providing dates. One that wasn't blurred in the slightest included an image of her face. One that looked like something taken from a school for picture day. I have no idea how they could have found that. The worse they got, the farther my heart sank to my legs. Whenever you thought the horrible messages couldn't get any worse, they did. Some of them sent her gore. Real gore. It was blurred so hard you couldn't make out anything specific, but you could tell it was gore by the blurred blobs being the color of human flesh. She made sure to blur it just right, as the blur first happened on one of the messages for half a second before it went to the one with the gore, and the blur stayed for just as long when it went to the next one without gore. I remembered one of the ones with gore had the message. What's gonna happen to you when I get my hands on you you little fucking shit, do you hear me? It was enough to make somebody's vomit. What made these worse was that most of these weren't anonymous, and weren't burner accounts either. Whenever you searched the account names of some of these horrid fucks, you'd see that they frequently posted stuff like political opinions, shows they liked, etc. Some were burners and some were anonymous, but some people had the fucking balls to say that shit with their identity unveiled to the world. One included a stock image of a car with the words, I'm gonna run you over. It wasn't anonymous, nor was it a burner. As the horrid messages began to be shown in full, Leah's Sona appeared in front of them all, head down, front facing. Her head suddenly jerked up, and a text appeared behind her. Check my blog. Her Sona had a mutilated face, looking almost zombified. She'd twitch and shake violently. Blood dripped from her Sona's barely recognizable head. The video began to blast static and loud tones. The Gravity Falls theme and the theme song for TSYLA played in the background, immensely distorted. Imagery was alongside these noises. Random scenes showing Gravity Falls and TSYLA's main cast being brutalized appeared. Mabel was inside of an empty warehouse. Her face was practically skinned, and she was in half. One of her eyes was missing and her throat was sliced wide open. Dipper was being beheaded violently by Bill who was surrounded by other antagonists. Jember being set on fire, EVL guy falling off of a building and falling to the ground below, splattering everywhere, etc. 
This may seem like random gory nonsense, but take into accountability the shit they sent her and it becomes obvious what this all was. This also didn't have any funny aspects, so this clearly wasn't just edgy humor at all. It won't stop it won't stop it won't stop. No matter how hard I try to get rid of it all, no matter how hard I press the block button, they keep coming back with new faces. I want to rip my eyes out of my fucking skull. It won't stop. Fuck 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 fuck. Text appeared in the corner to the left at the top of the screen over the gore scenes. The video ended with a shot of Leah's sona traced over that one scene in Saw, where Lawrence has to cut his foot off to escape the chain. It wasn't animated, but it was traced over. Text was layered over this. The text read. I have to do something, to make it all cease. The video ended abruptly. The comments left by the people who supported her and enjoyed her work were what you would expect. Pure horror and concern for her. If you followed the instructions of the text before the gravity falls and T.S. Wiley door scenes, you'd be met with a new post. It was an image Leah took. When it was reverse image searched, it couldn't trace back to anything but her post. The image was of a rifle. Below the image was the caption for the post. Please leave a flower on my tombstone. The people who actually did support her and the scum were all in one cesspool below in the comments. Some of the scum were pretending they never said that stuff, saying things like, it was just a joke, chill out, and worst of all, continuing to say the horrible shit. The people who supported her were begging her not to do what they knew she was going to do to herself. A day passed, and we were all met with horrible news. A post was made on her blog, but it wasn't made by Leah. It was made by her parents. I'm going to transcribe everything from memory. Yesterday our daughter took her own life because of relentless harassment she received online. We understand not everybody who interacted with her account was taking part in this, and that some were trying to help her. To those people, we thank you for trying to help her. To the others, you know what you did. You drove a bright, charismatic and charming girl into suicide. We sincerely hope you're unable to live with yourself after what you've done. If you tried to help her or if you care in the slightest, pay your respects. If not, don't dare even think about interacting with this post. She made this world a better place, and now she's gone. I remember some of the scum had left comments, but you had to scroll a long while to find the bad ones. They were overshadowed by the people actually paying respects. Whenever I saw anybody leaving a horrible message, I'd immediately report it. I can't find her accounts nowadays, nor can I find any trace of anything she's done. But I know that this happened. Who here remembers Fruit Punch Bicycle? If you do, good. I'm sure she'd like to be remembered.